In, we are basically uh, going to the AI. AI is a much bigger term than the inner term is machine learning and within it the deep learning. So this is uh, here, it is a neural network in 1943, uh, it was first discovered by McLaurin Peaks. There are some winter ages of uh, uh, AI, like it was in Rosenblatt, in, uh, uh, and already the Turing is very contribution, but he has unfortunately died in 1954. Um, then the, there is a famous 1956 conference, that is the first uh, AI, it is a workshop by uh, it is very important it's a milestone and then the there is a uh, rosenblatt and uh, they make it training and there is a winter come then uh, professor minsky has shown that a typical neural net cannot uh, detect the exclusive or logic so we are going to that quickly uh, excuse me Yeah, so these these are the famous people in 1956. Uh, they are the start the AI invention. Alan Turing is first. Uh, uh, what should be the intelligent machine? He given idea in 1952's paper. So this I am not much going into this. Uh, just quickly, this is the we we are basically working on the deep learning network. But here the neuron is there. Uh, he first discovered 1943. Then, the, uh, then uh, this is the particular learning that is we have say uh, we have around uh, 10 to the power 11 neurons and every neurons have one exon and 10 to the power 4 inputs and there are around 10, uh, 10 to the power 15 synapses in our head and uh, the more you are training with uh, particular things like say um, like Messi training with free kick, particularly the movement, leg muscle, head, all are uh, give a perfect free kick so that he can make a goal. So that is a heavier learning. That is, if you practice a difficult thing, that the, all the particular neurons associated with brain or muscle will be more uh, weighted. Same, we are here as is more, more and more learning with the, your uh, programming, with your machine learning, more we can learn. So this is this is the thing. The Frank Rosenberg was involved, has invented the neuron model. Then uh, this is this. I'll come. This is all you will know. This is the basic neuron. But the problem is, it cannot detect any linear pattern. It can detect, but exclusive or it cannot detect. That we will see. But we we circumvent this uh, neural network problem with multiple uh, layers and uh, humongous type of new neurons that we see our exercises. So this is the main paper Marvin Pinsky uh, uh, published 1969. He proved that a single neuron can identify all patterns except, except exclusive ones. Mm, so uh, this one, uh, this, this is, this is the, we are here particularly uh, now we, we all know that uh, it will be fit forward network and we need some convolutional neural network because we, because even ECG is basically nothing but an image and it has to be convoluted and uh, there are convolution and next to pooling pooling means it's a max pooling or average pooling generally we go for max pooling max pooling suppresses the noise average pooling is just take the average number of 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 that kernel very simple but you have multiple convolutional layers as you will see in your ECG detection but one good thing is that we do not have RGB we have a uh, single color that is simplify our problem and this is a standard convolutional network and this one uh, same thing this is Always we practice, whenever you make a practice, you always go for a missed database. Um, that is the practice and all the libraries are there. Mm, there is a 0 to 10 characters are there. Uh, this is the, see the kernel. This is kernel is, it is the main image and it is 3 by 3 kernel. 
So in Google Net, we see the 7 by 7. Generally, 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 or 7 by 7. Generally, it is an odd number. And uh, see here with the kernel, it is uh, taking the averaging certain errors and all, averaging the values. So right now, we have, um, these are the landmarks, Linet uh, 1998, AlexNet 2012, uh, GFNet 2013, GoogleNet 2014, VGGNet 2014, all the ports and these things are available. So what I suggest, you should map your project at current stage with one particular network. If you, okay, it's okay if you, it is, it is Linet 1998 or AlexNet, I think you can match it with AlexNet and then what is the improvement? Uh, because it is we, we we cannot generate the net here because we we have the problem of the hardware because wherever you go you have to buy a lot of computing power so what are the good thing you have done that we have done uh, taken a uh, not very costly images that is no color and you 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 have to detect the various classes of ECG so you just go to find out the what are the papers and you definitely have done it. So this architecture, we have to again go back and again. And this is the Alex net. These are the basically searching from image net, searching from uh, and taking any main image and uh, identify it within uh, thousand subclasses. This is a very standard image processing, uh, image uh, computer vision application, Alex net. Then it is comes. Uh, this is another uh, Alex that is original paper. Whenever you can find time, you can look at it or you can mention at least at your, uh, I'll send you all the link and all this thing to your project report. And this is uh, sometimes back, um, uh, I know uh, one, one, two, one sec, the, some of you have asked what is max pooling and all these things. I think now it is clear. The max pooling is always generally, I, I have told you either max pooling or average pooling. Generally max pooling, it is taking the, uh, um, uh, maximum number of matrix of the 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 or 7 by 7 after the kernel operation is done. Why it, what is kernel operation? It is selecting a, a particular straight line. Of, it is basically uh, this particular layers are detecting the low level features. Uh, say in a bicycle, first it detects the, somebody detects the rod, somebody detects the circle with the various kernels and ultimately they detect the bicycle. So low level features like circle, rectangle and all this. So every uh, kernel will select that particular features with 3 by 3 or 5 by 5. With Google will see, Google uh, DeepMind will see the uh, 7 by 7. Uh, so, so you should also able to map uh, to your project after, uh, not tomorrow, you next this one. And this one, uh, this one, it is a uh, input convolutional layer pooling with different several convolutional layer can be there and ultimately you have um, ECG how many heart uh, conditions you can detect. Uh, this is this is a kernel matrix I have told you generally 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 it is take the max uh, what is taking I think it is taking the average it is a uh, average it is taking. This is uh, you ask that uh, any activity that means uh, when the ne particular network will be activated, which activation function we use, uh, we will use that ReLU activity or leaky ReLU uh, in the classification. ReLU is one advantage, it is uh, competition is uh, much less, it is a basically uh, slope with a slope with Z type of thing, reverse Z, uh, so like this, and it is. And maybe leaky ReLU is it is asymptotically touches zero and one, so it has been shown that is it is better. Max pool I have already told you this is the it is a twenty is the maximum here thirty is the maximum here hundred twelve is the maximum here the thirty seven is the maximum that is the max pool. Uh, average pool is this is, but max pool is always preferred. This is. Uh, Convolution, uh, this is a, uh, done by the Google project in 2014 paper. At your time, you read it and whether you can map any output of it. Uh, this is, they have uh, 
uh, many layers and, uh, and see here it is 7 by 7. In Alex there with you. Uh, we are group A12 presenting the topic cardiologist level arrhythmia detection and classification in ambulatory ECG using a deep neural network. Are the guidance of uh, Dr. Somnath Roy Choudhury. Presenters include myself, Aurietri Bhattacharya, Deepika Chandra, Nisha Kumari, and Sohail Reja. Um, please change the slide. Yeah. Uh, so our first slide is uh, uh, describes the objectives uh, we have focused on and uh, our approach to the project. Well, our approach could aid arrhythmia diagnosis in clinics and be used for patient self monitoring to improve the early detection and effective treatment of arrhythmia. Uh, this is used to design deep learning architecture to classify an ECG signal by empirically optimizing the numbers of hidden layers. Next slide. Uh, the next slide is a little introduction on ECG and its uh, utilities. Computerized electrocardiogram, that is ECG interpretation, plays a critical role in the clinical ECG workflow. Widely available digital ECG data and al uh, algorithm paradigm of deep learning present an opportunity to substantially improve the accuracy and scalability of an automated ECG analysis. Here we develop a deep neural network DNN to classify 12 rhythmic classes using 91,232 single led ECGs from 53,549 patients who use a single led ambulatory ECG monitoring device. The findings demonstrate that an end-to-end -end deep learning approach can classify a broad range of distinct arrhythmias from single led ECGs with high diagnostic performance similar to that of cardiologists. If confirmed in clinical settings, this approach could reduce the rate of misdiagnosed computerized ECG interpretations and improve the efficiency of expert human ECG interpretation by accurately triaging or prioritizing the most urgent conditions. Next slide, please. Uh, well, to start explaining this uh, slide, I would first like to say a little uh, note about ECG. Well, ECG is a process of producing an electrocardiogram. It is an electrogram of heart, which is a graph of voltage versus time of the electrical activity of the heart using electrodes placed on the skin. These electrodes uh, detect the small electrical changes that are a consequence of cardiac muscle depolarization followed by depolarization during each cardiac cycle, that is a heartbeat. Now here we, ha uh, we, can, we are able to see uh, various different waves, that is P, Q, R, S and T. So to start with, uh, a P wave basically uh, represents depolarization of left and right atrium and also corresponds to arterial connection. The QRS complex that includes the Q, R and S waves occur in rapid succession, represents the electrical impulsion, it spreads through the ventricles and indicates ventricular depolarization. The final wave that is a T wave which is uh, followed by QRS indicates ventricular um, Next slide please. Next up we have a CIE which stands for Computer uh, Interpreted ECG. Computerized interpreted uh, interpretation of electrocardiogram that is CIE was introduced to improve the correct interpretation of electrocardiogram that is ECG, facilitating uh, healthcare decisions, decision making and reducing costs. Consequently, CIE over reading and confirming by an exp experienced ECG reader are essential and are repeatedly recommended in published reports. Implementation of new ECG knowledge is also important. Significant pro progress was made in the development of ECG algorithms for use of the CIE. However, limitations are still present requiring standardization which continuous improvement with continuous improvement in applied software and uniformization of ECG diagnostic criteria and statements. Systematic overreading of CIE is mandatory. Now I would like to uh, like my friend to present the next slide. Okay. Oh, good evening everyone. I am Deepika Chandra and now the topic is arrhythmia. Now, arrhythmia, a heart arrhythmia, arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat. Heart rhythm problems occur when the electrical signals that coordinate the heart speed don't work properly. There are two types of arrhythmia, uh, tachycardia, which is a fast uh, heart resting heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute, and bradycardia is a slow heartbeat. The resting heart rate is less than 60, 
60 bits a minute. Yes, that's right. Uh, now, machine learning. First of all, what is machine learning? Uh, it is a technique of training machine to perform the activities of women then can do a bit faster and better than an average woman. Uh, now, it part is supervised learning. Uh, supervised learning is a type of machine learning in which machines are trained using brain level training data. Level data means some input data is already tagged with the correct output. It has uh, two types classification and regression. Uh, classification gives concrete, uh, sorry, discrete and qualitative uh, output regression, continuous and quantitative. Uh, in classification, the input data and the output is a class, and in regression, the input data and output is a number. Uh, second is unsupervised learning. Uh, unsupervised learning is a type of machine learning in which machines are trained using uh, unlabeled training data. It has two types clustering and dimensionality reduction. Uh, in clustering, the input data to find input uh, regularities and in dimensionality reduction, the input data to find the best lower dimensional representation. Uh, now, re reinforcement learning. In this learning, the agent learns automatically using feedback without any label data. Approach to implement reinforcement learning is policy based, which follow Markov property and the elements of the uh, Policy based is agent action, environment reward, uh, agent learns. Yes, this one. Now, deep learning. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Uh, it is a neural network with three or more layers. Uh, it uh, application is, is speech recognition, visual object recognition, object detection, and many other do domains such as drug discovery and genomics. Deep learning discovers intricate structure in large datasets by using the back propagation algorithm to indicate how a machine should change its internal parameters that are used to compute the representation in each layer from the representation in previous layer. Uh, deep convolutional nets have brought about uh, breakthroughs in processing images, video, speech and audio, whereas recurrent nets have shown uh, light on sequential data such as text and speech. Uh, this is the figure. Uh, first. Input layer, and then hidden layer 1, hidden layer 2, hidden layer 3, and output layer. Now, so here we will present from this. Good evening, everyone. I am Sol Reja. <coughs> so, now we will see the uh, review or study. In this study, we constructed a large novel ECG data set that underwent expert annotation for a board. <coughs> board broad range of ECG rhythms classes. We develop a DNA to detect 12 rhythm classes from raw single lead ECG inputs using a training data set cons uh, consisting of 19,232 ECG records from 53,549 patients. The DNA was designed to classify 10 arithmetic uh, as well as, well as <coughs> sense rhythm and noise for a total of 12 output rhythm classes. ECG data were recorded by the geo, uh, by the geo monitor which is which is a food and drug administration uh, that is FDA cleared single lead path based amb uh, ambulatory ECG monitor uh, 27 that constitutionally record <coughs> record data from a single vector at 200 Hz. The main and median where time of the geo monitor is in our data set was 10.6 and 13.0 days respectively. Man is man age was 16 years and 43 percent were women. Man is one test data set was 17 years where 38% women, the main inter annotator uh, agreement or the test data set was 72.8%. Next slide. Next is <coughs> proposed method or algorithm. 
also study participants and sam and sampling procedures in this study we con we extract a median of of on 30 second per patient to construct the training data set we randomly sample patient exhibition each rather to further improve the balance of classes in training data set rare rhythms such as abv were internationally were sampled with a median of 30 second records per patient for the test data set 30 second patient uh, 30 second records of each rhythm were sampled in similar man manner to achieve a greater presentation of a rare rhythm however the test data set include only single record per patient next annotation pro uh, procedures all ecg records in the training and test data set underwent underwent additionally annotation procedures we we used separate procedure to annotate the training and test data set to annotate annotate to annotate the training data set a group of senior certified ecg tech, uh, technicians review the records and noted the onset or offset of all rhythms on the record we held we held out record from the random 10% of the training data set present for use as a development data set to perform dna hyper parameter tuning next next is algorithm development so at first we develop a convolution dna to detect arithmetic uh, arithmia which takes as input the raw ecg data and output on prediction if every 25 20 every 256 samples which we call the output interval we found the residual connection useful only the day only on the depth of the model exists eight layers we also experimented experimented with the recurrent layers including long short long short term memory long short term memory cells 46 and bidirectional recurrence but found no improvement in the assurance and substantial increase in run time we manually turned the learning rate to achieve fast convergence next is algorithm evolution since the dnn output on class prediction every output interval it makes a series of 23 rhythm prediction of prediction for every 30 second records the cardiologist annotated annotated the start and end point each rhythm classes in the record we used this used this construct a cardiologist level at the at every output interval by rounding the annotation of the nearest interval boundary therefore therefore mod, uh, therefore model accuracy can be accessed at the level of level of every output interval which we call sequence level or at the record level which we call set level the sequence level evolution also similar to the clinical application uh, applications whereby it is critical to identify the onset and offset uh, of rhythms evolution at the set level is useful abstraction approximating how approximating how the dnn algorithm might be applied to a single ecg record in identif identify which diagnoses are present in the given record So Nisha, handing over to Nisha for the next part. Uh, thank you, Sohel. So now I would like to uh, throw some light about this uh, that statistical analysis. So uh, to obtain the estimates of how the DNN compares to an average cardiologist, uh, the characteristics of cardiologist performance were averaged across the six cardiologists. 
uh, who individually annotated each record. So we use we will be using the confusion matrix to illustrate the dif uh, specific examples of rhythm classes where uh, the DNN prediction or the individual cardiologist's uh, prediction were uh, discordant with uh, the committee sense consensus at the sequence level. So here we can see uh, the prediction by uh, the uh, at the at an average cardiologist level and. Uh, here, uh, the uh, DNA predicted level, uh, uh, what it's uh, DNA uh, uh, DNA predicted co con. Sorry, my bad. Uh, confusion matrix uh, is uh, displayed over here. Uh, so. So the, these are the hardware and the software requirements. We'll get, so we uh, use the software operating, uh, the operating system that we used were uh, Windows and Linux. The front end uh, is obviously the Python 3.7 and the platform that we are using to execute our code is uh, uh, Kaggle Notebook, Python 3, Anaconda, PyCharm, Scikit-Learn uh, and uh, TensorFlow. Uh, and the hardware requirements are uh, the speed or uh, should be 233 uh, megahertz or above hard disk should be at least uh, 10 gb and ram should be at least 256 mb so now uh, the prototype of uh, our uh, uh, project so uh, this uh, the flow chart shows the prototype of project uh, first let uh, me uh, uh, first, let me describe the uh, uh, the annotations that uh, we have used. So here, uh, the con conv means uh, convolutional layer, BN means bash normalization layer, uh, RLU means uh, rectilinear uh, unit. So, uh, like uh, we can see, the entire neural network is an optimization of multiple models uh, to reduce the uh, bias by uh, variance trade-off so individual blocks uh, over here uh, should uh, basically mean the training steps of an individual model uh, which could be considered as uh, the steps for boosting so here a convolutional layer is the simple a convolution is the simple application of a filter to an input that results in the activation uh, convolutional layers are the layers where uh, filters are applied to the original image or to other feature maps in a deep CNN. This is where most of the user specified parameters are in the network. So uh, the most important parameters are the number of kernels and the size of the kernels. Uh, repeated application of the same filter to an input results in a map activation called a feature map indicating the locations and uh, uh, strength of a detected feature in an input. Uh, so now uh, we see uh, the BN that is the batch normalization. Uh, so softmax, BN and dense are also uh, the activation functions. Uh, here uh, the innovation of convolutional neural network is the ability to automatically learn a large number of filters uh, in parallel uh, specific to a training data set. So uh, a den a dense is an activation network, uh, activation function for the layers of the neural network. Uh, and uh, the BN as I have already mentioned that refers to the BN layer in the, convenu in the convolutional neural, neural network that we are using. So, uh, normal, we normalize the inputs to within a layer for uh, each mini batch uh, and the result uh, is the st stabilizes learning a process of network model and reduces number of training epochs required. So, uh, let, uh, let me talk, about, uh, talk a bit about uh, uh, batch normalization. Uh, it is basically a technique for uh, training very deep learning uh, deep neural networks that standardizes the input to a layer for each mini batch. Uh, the rectified linear uh, activation function or ReLU, ReLU for short is a piecewise linear function that will uh, output 
the input directly if uh, it is positive otherwise it will output zero now we can see there is a dropout activation function it is actually a technique uh, where randomly selected neurons are ignored during the training uh, that is they are randomly dropped out which means that their contribution to the activation of downstream neurons is uh, uh, temporarily removed on the forward pass. Now, uh, the addition of the pooling layer. Uh, uh, the addition of uh, a pooling layer after the convolutional layer is a common pattern used for uh, ordering layers within a convolutional neural network that may be repeated one or more times in a given model. Here we have used max pooling, uh, uh, which uh, to calculate the maximum value for each patch uh, of the uh, feature map. So dense layer is uh, the simple layer of neurons in which each neuron receives input from all the neurons uh, of previous layers, uh, and therefore it is called the dense layer. It is used to classify the image based on output from the convolutional layer. Now comes the softmax. Softmax is a, a mathematical function that converts a vector of numbers into a vector of probabilities, where the probabilities of each value are proportional to the relative scale of each value in the vector. Uh, the, the most uh, uh, common use of uh, softmax function uh, in applied machine learning or deep learning is in its use as an activation function in a neural network model. Uh, so each value in the output of the softmax function is interpreted as the probability of the membership for each class. So I would like to show, uh, I've already run the code for, yes. So here we can see we have low, the first let me show the data set. <clears throat> so uh, the data set has uh, got uh, uh, four, uh, is, uh, class, is uh, classified into four sets, uh, the testing sets, the training sets, the abnormal uh, uh, heart rhythms and the normal heart rhythm. So, we'll be feeding our neural network uh, these data. First, we loaded our data and uh, uh, we loaded our data and then uh, we imported and uh, then we tried to balance uh, the data sets. Uh, so, as we can see, uh, the, cla the classes are not balanced here properly. So, we tried to resample it. And after resampling, as we can see, it is uh, equally balanced, perfectly balanced. Uh, so, and now what comes are the classes. Uh, in this part, we uh, we we want to uh, we study different type of classes, uh, and we have plotted different uh, heart rhythms for the different classes. So, for example, here uh, this is the normal uh, this is the uh, graph plotted for the normal uh, rhythm uh, heart rhythm uh, so after that uh, we plotted it as the histogram uh, now uh, similarly we uh, representation uh, we uh, presented it uh, for all the class we take all the signal and map them we took all the signal and map them like that we have an estimation what the signal can look like. So here uh, we got uh, uh, the graph, and here how here is how the signal looks like. Uh, similarly, we plotted again, and uh, here uh, for example, I have uh, mentioned three type of classes uh, that uh, can uh, that uh, is uh, available. Uh, first, the sinus pause. Uh, the SVPC and the VPC. So in second and the third lines, huh, we are uh, we are trying to uh, find out uh, through ECG diagrams the fusion beat. So, but uh, uh, for me, 
or for the normal eye we won't be able to see uh, much difference uh, because until and unless we are an ecg difference but uh, uh, our data our uh, output suggested that uh, these two are different so again we plotted and now uh, we uh, now there comes uh, training our uh, neural network so here uh, we trained uh, the different uh, layers of our uh, neural network and uh, and uh, ran the epoch for like for uh, right now uh, we were only like i was only able to run uh, the epoch for 13 times because for uh, 40 epochs it would it would take more than 3 hours or approximately 3 hours to execute so uh, till 13 epochs we can see the accuracy uh, came out to be 72.45% which is not bad for the 13 cycles so yeah and uh, then we plotted uh, the model accuracy uh, against the, the epoch uh, the uh, orange line indicates uh, the uh, validation and uh, validation data and uh, the and the blue uh, blue line uh, indicates the training data and then uh, we also try uh, tried to plot the uh, mod, uh, loss model uh, against epoch so here uh, the uh, yeah and then we finally uh, tried to uh, visualize the confusion matrix uh, so the confusion matrix uh, and norm first we normalized uh, normalized uh, the functions and uh, then uh, we tried to uh, visualize it in the uh, confusion matrix so like we talked uh, talk previously in the statistical uh, analysis uh, about the confusion matrix that uh, uh, that will be uh, that will we be getting after training a deep learning model so uh, we can see that uh, it was it is similar to what an average cardiologist would predict but yeah i uh, i need to uh, what it's called i need to uh, import early stopping from kira's uh, callback so that uh, uh, so that the uh, early stopping can be removed and i can i'll be able to uh, run the epoch for 40 cycles and uh, like that will just accelerate uh, the execution time so yeah that's it we need to improve uh, on that right now uh, so that we can run uh, for the 40 epochs so till now we have uh, reached till here and uh, yeah that's about it mm. thank you very good very good presentation by you all